From the heartland of America, focused on God, family, and country, the mouthpiece of the Midwest, this is Dale Carter's America. With Kurt Wheeler, I'm Dale Carter. We welcome you to Dale Carter's America. We have a lot to talk about today, so buckle in. It's going to be a great episode. We want to thank Bob Watson, one of our sponsors here right off the top. Uh, Bob just renewed for another six months as a sponsor on the podcast, so thank you, Bob, for that. He's at 7th and Main in Blue Springs, 816-229-7878. Auto, home, life, commercial insurance. We're into spring. You'll get the boats out. Uh, he can insure anything. Licensed in Missouri and Kansas. And and I had a great story about this because we talk about the fact, Kurt, that when you call Bob's office at 816-229-7878, you get somebody who speaks English, right? Yeah. And deals with your issue as you as you need it dealt with. I had an issue with our own health insurance company at Steel City Media. I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for saying this or not, <laughs> but I needed a podiatrist, right? Uh -huh. And so I called the number on the back of the card and I said, look, you know, I know you're out of Pittsburgh and all that, uh, but I need a podiatrist. And I get, they should be helping you, right? You know, can I fill in the blank? <laughs> and, you know, um, <laughs> long story short, um, what I get back is he's going to send me a list of all the doctors who qualify for this. And he says, and, and please fill out the survey to let us know how we did. You know, So um, what he sends me is a list of pediatricians, not podiatrists. Podiatrist is foot doctor, yeah. right? And uh, so pediatricians we got, we got foot fungus or something? for kids. I have a toenail issue, which we're not going to get into right now, but I'm <laughs> going to get it fixed. But our health insurance, you know, they, they sent us to a foreign country to deal with somebody who was going to fix my problem. And then at the end, had the balls to say, will you fill out our survey? And Let, the, the survey is in like Sanskrit? Or oh, no, no, no. Language. It's in English and all that. <laughs> and I didn't even bother because if I filled it out, it would be, get somebody who freaking speaks English. Right, right. You know? Uh, that's that's what anyway. So I, I knew Bob would have a get a kick out of that because when you call Bob's office, Terry's who I deal with most of the time have for the last twenty eight years. You can reach them at eight one six two two nine seven eight seven eight. Get a quote uh, whenever your insurance is coming up. They have surprisingly great rates at State Farm, and we love having Bob Watson with us. You know the the Bob uh, Watson spots are just like I feel like that's just the vehicle for you to complain about all of your customer service oh problems. just wait <laughs> because he gets two per podcast and I've got another complaint <laughs> that I'm going to fire off here later on in the podcast so uh, how can folks make contact on the podcast how can we grow this thing I know you've got some ideas yeah so um well you know we've made some upgrades to the video podcast so we would love if you would check that out on YouTube and Rumble. If you're just listening to the audio only, that's fine too, but uh, you know, at least give it a shot. Uh, make sure you subscribe. You have to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell on YouTube and Rumble or wherever you get podcasts so that you are notified when new episodes come out. And really the best thing that you can do is share it with your friends. You know, share our uh, YouTube link on Facebook. Uh, you know, comment on the YouTube video. Uh, commenting really helps the the algorithm and uh, all of those things, liking, commenting, subscribing will really help us out and we really appreciate all the support. And we've been doing some other things, you know, as well, uh, trying to kind of get out into the, into the community a little bit more. We've worked before with We the People of Johnson County, Missouri. Uh, you were not there, but I went and gave a little speech one time, which... It's not my strong suit, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we uh, so we they had their meeting last night, and yeah. uh, I put together a little survey. Uh, and so the idea with the survey is we wanted to find out what issues are most important to people. So they were able to rank uh, these issues from one to ten, with one being the most important, ten being the least important. And so in order of the most important issues, the most important issue, meaning the one that got the most number one votes was election integrity. Hmm. So that's the most important issue to the people of, we the people of Johnson County, Missouri. Second place tied is second amendment and abortion. Behind that, we have government overreach. Behind that, we have immigration. Behind that, we have criminal justice and LGBT issues tied. Um, behind that, we have financial policy. Behind that, we have foreign policy. And behind that, we have energy and environment. Hmm. So election integrity, you know, you always, uh, maybe we, we need to spend more attention. I mean, this is small sample size. Right, but, right, you know. right. 
energy um, all the way at the bottom of the list. The bottom of the list, yep. Mm, I think that's going to be moving up. We're going to have a special guest the week that I'm gone. Bob Jackaway is going to join us from um, Max Motors. They've got dealerships all over the metro, and we're going to talk about EVs and what it really means. But that's coming up the first week of May here on the podcast. I get out sometimes, too. You know, I was out uh, Friday night. I was hosting a trivia night in Blue Springs, Missouri. And, you know, we had, I like to have fun when I do these things, right? And I, I poke fun at myself. I poke fun at everybody else. And um, somebody came up to me, one of my friends, and said, I've noticed that nobody's ordering Bud Light from the bar. <laughs> and so I was making a little bit of fun of that, right? And I think at some point I said something like, well, you know, these days you can be whatever you want to be. And this guy who's wearing like this big orange shirt and he's like got this face beard from, you know, hell, he goes, he, he heckles and he goes, you can lose the Bud Light. <laughs> I mean, nobody else thought it was that big a deal. I don't think it offended anybody, but you know how it is. There's always one. Did you see, uh, what's the guy that has that song, uh, Coolers never run out of cold Bud Light. Uh, Riley, mm. no, that's not That's not right. Uh, <laughs> you know that song, you know, you know that, no, come on, come on, come on. Work with me here, work with me here. You know that country song, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, it's, it says coolers never run out of Bud Light in the song. If you're listening to this, yeah. please comment on the YouTube video. I'm terrible at this game. You, you know, know what I'm talking about. You run a freaking country station. I Come know on, that, man. and I get calls all the time. It's like, you know, I can't think of the title or who sings it, but it has something to do with a truck. Can you, yeah. can you help me? And you're doing the same thing. I, I can't think of who sings it or what the title is, but it's got, it's got beer in it. No, get a copperhead. The cool has never run out a cold Bud Light. You know, if Tony Stevens were on the podcast, he would do this in his sleep because he's really good at this yeah. game. Well, I anyways, am not. there was a video that I saw on Twitter. I'm not going to find it right now, but that song has that line, Coolers Never Run Out of Cold Bud Light. And he was playing it at a big stadium show and he changed it to Coolers Never Run Out of Cold Coors Light. And everyone cheered. Okay. So that's, so that that's, was your point. Yeah. There yeah, was a yeah. point to the story. Yeah. Well, that's really good. Okay. So, uh, you know, we, we had put together the outline for this podcast before everything blew up here on this local story uh, involving this young man who was shot for going to the wrong residence. I guess he rang the doorbell of Andrew Lester, who's an 84-year-old white guy. Have you seen his uh, mugshot? No. Angry white man. There's no question about that. Pull up his mugshot and you'll get a, a shot What's of that. What's his name? Uh, Andrew Lester. Um, so 16-year-old Ralph Yarl goes to his house. Now, I didn't say anything about on the air about this for a while because I wanted more facts to come out. Because you know what happens on stories like this. People just take whatever snippet of it they want and they run with it. So with the caveat that I don't know everything, I'm not part of the investigation, I'm just dealing with the facts on the ground as we know them now. So the 16-year-old kid rings the doorbell, he's allegedly there to pick up his kids, he goes to uh, the wrong street, the wrong house, rings the doorbell, and he's shot twice by 84-year-old Andrew Lester. So from there, and he wasn't killed, thank God. I mean, he's already out of the hospital. He's recovering. Uh, he took one in the head, one in the arm. Is yeah, what his he was shot in the forehead, I think, like the side of the head or something. My and God, he that's just terrible. And from everything I hear, this is a wonderful kid. You know, I like to take race out of this. Can we do that? I don't know that we can. But but you I should like, ask the people who are putting race into it. If I'm, we can I'm take aware. Race out of it. You know, <laughs> because he's already been called by President Biden, the 16 year old. There was a tweet from Vice President Harris about this, and right below this in the news, Kurt, there's another story with no races indicated at all, where a 49 year old has been charged in Cass County with killing a 50 year old woman, shot and killed Sunday. I don't think uh, President Biden made a call on this. I don't think that VP Harris did a tweet on this, but of course, because, you know, the young man is black um, and the man who shot him is an old white guy, all of a sudden it's become the biggest story in the country. Yeah. And it's also, you know, people are immediately going to like emotional reactions, which is understandable if you're in his family or you know the kid or whatever, because it's terrible what happened to him. Uh, by all accounts that we can see, you know, obviously he shouldn't have been shot. But, you know, we don't really know everything about the case. And we even, don't. And even uh, because there was no I, other eyewitness accounts, the kid got shot and then he ran to neighbors' houses, you know, and was banging on their doors to call 911 or whatever. And so the only actual accounts of the moment of the shooting are from the kid and the guy. 
and there's already conflicting stories from the two of them. The, the kid apparently says that uh, he was going to pick up his siblings. He went to the wrong house. He rang the doorbell and then got shot. And the guy apparently says that he was pulling on the door. Now, is that a significant difference? I'm not sure, but it is a difference. You know, if you live in the hood yeah, and somebody's yeah. pulling on your door and you live alone, you know, and you're an old guy, um, that changes things. Not to say that it's justified, but it changes things. And it's just, uh, I mean, I have so much more to say about it, but I'll let you go. <laughs> well, um, here's what I think about all of this. Um, Second Amendment is the Second Amendment, and that man had a right to have a gun. He had a right to defend his house and all that. But when you have that right, that Second Amendment right, Kurt, you also have a responsibility, and you also have um, whatever happens based on your actions. If you shoot somebody, it better be a good shoot. And if it's not, you should go to jail. And this guy may go to jail for a long time. Well, he's been charged. Yeah, he's been charged. Yeah. And we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens with, with the case. But, I mean, I think I think there's a broader story here, too. And, and it's, you know, something that people don't want to talk about, but it's being shoved in our faces. You know, I, I see all over Facebook, all over Instagram, everywhere, you know, everyone is posting this kid's picture. And like you said, I'm, if by all accounts that we have, he seemed like a great kid, and I'm not taking anything away from that. You know, they're posting this picture of him playing bass clarinet at the concert and everything like that. And it's like, this is what it is to be black in America, and we're under attack, and we we aren't even safe. And it's like, look at the freaking interracial crime statistics. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that is just not the case. It's actually the opposite is the case. I mean, the the trend is not you know, racist old white people shooting black kids for no reason. The trend is gangs of black thugs beating up white people. That is the trend. And it just, I mean, there's so many cases. There was just a high profile case of this happening in Chicago over the weekend. Right. You can see this whole gang of, of kids beating up this this random white lady for no reason. Yeah, and the new mayor... Where is the attention for that? Well, the new mayor basically excuses it. Yeah, and like it's... And, and we're just conditioned. We're conditioned as a society to not give a shit about that because she's white, because, you know, they're poor or whatever. We make excuses. Nobody gives a shit. We don't bring race into it. And, and, and there's actual... Again, if you look at the statistics, if you look at the trend of what's happening, it's not what they're saying it is. It's the opposite of what they're saying it is. You know, are we at the point now where... We need to start actually looking at, like, this white lady that got beat up. Nobody knows her name. Why aren't we saying her name? We yeah. should be, you know, oh, say her name, say her name. We sh Maybe we should be getting behind that. You know, it's like, and it's just, it's Did so President frustrating. Did President Biden call her? I doubt it. Yeah. It's just so frustrating to me to see something that is genuinely tragic, like this event that happened in Kansas City. Again, by all accounts, we don't have all the information. Genuinely tragic. Obviously, nobody wants to see a kid get shot, you know, for unjustifiably, for no reason or, or for whatever, you know. Um, but to see that just get taken and wrenched into this uh, woke, like shoving down your throat racial grievance stuff that is totally unjustified is very frustrating to me. And it, it, and it needs to be pushed back on strongly because that is the narrative. That is the prevailing narrative that's taking over the entire conversation. Mm. And, you know, now this, uh, this Ben Crump guy is coming in. I don't know if you're aware of him, but he's, he's this big, uh, lawyer and he's represented, um, he represented the guy that got beat by those five black officers, uh, and killed. He represented, I think, um, not maybe Michael Brown or like a lot of these high profile right. cases. This guy comes in, he's a leech, you know, he's he's all on the 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 grievance narrative. He gets in front of the cameras, right. he comes and you know and milks up the family, you know, and and now they're on uh they're on uh GoFundMe too, which they have a right to do. You sure. know, they they have a right to to raise money. And they're on GoFundMe. They've raised two point eight million dollars on GoFundMe. A lot in, of celebrities in the last that. like three days. Yeah. And again, totally their prerogative to do that. You know, I mean, we'll see where the money goes. You know, hopefully yeah. it goes to a good cause because a lot of times with GoFundMe, there's not very much transparency. But like, where's the attention for this for 
other people. It, right. It's it's just it, it's well, so blatant to me. I just mentioned the Cass County person who was killed uh, in Kansas City. You know what's our murder rate? Almost every day, uh, there's there's something that happens here in in the uh, Westport, the Midtown area where we're working right now. I mean, you know, you don't hear anything about that. They just shove that under the rug. Uh, Chicago, where there's violence and and murders on a daily basis, they just shove it under the rug. So to your point, you know, this is getting a lot of attention. And it's because it's an old white guy and yeah. it's a young black man. Yeah. Um, and they put that at the headline of the of story, course. too. It's like, white guy shoots black kid. Right. And then, you know, you can almost assume, like this other story you're talking about, if they don't mention the race, it's probably a black person that did it. You know what I mean? Or, exactly. or not a white person. Or a white person on a white person. The yeah. only time that they mention it is when there's this kind of a component where it's a young black man and it's an old white guy. Mm-hmm. So they're definitely going to mention that, and they're going to be all over this. So, I mean, you bring up a lot of things that make me say, let's step back, let's take a deep breath, let's let the investigation run, okay? Let the people who know the facts on the ground and who can get into what happened and, you know, sort out the facts on this thing. I have bigger concerns about the Second Amendment and about guns and your responsibility when you have a gun. So can I put on my crown? Can oh, I put yeah. it on? Let's yeah. do the crown. King for a day here. Okay. I wasn't ready. I'm sorry. Ah, because you were on a rant. <laughs> I was king just one day. I would it all away. <laughs> you know I hope you know all these movie references, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do. Okay, so if we can take uh, the temperature down a little bit, right, and pull the racial component out of it, we have a Second Amendment right to have a firearm. And I believe in that. I don't have guns myself, um, but I believe in your Second Amendment right to have one. You also have a responsibility. Uh, when, when you pull that trigger, if you think your life is in danger, you have a responsibility, and there are consequences that could come from that. So with that said, what I've said before, but now that i put the crown on and I'm king for a day, this is going to be the law of the land if I'm running this place. If you kill somebody with a gun and it's deemed to be murder— Okay, no other, not self-defense, that's all been ferreted out. If it's deemed to be murder in a jury trial, you go away for the rest of your life. No ifs, ands, or buts. There is, there, there's no plea bargaining. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are. If you've murdered somebody, you go away for the rest of your life. If you commit a crime with a gun, there are maximum minimums, and there's no plea bargain on any of that. And if we have to let out every person who is there on a conviction of a marijuana charge, which more states are saying that's legal now, if we've got to clear out all the prisons to make way for violent offenders, let's do that. If we need to build more prisons to put violent criminals away, let's do that. So if you commit a crime with a gun, uh, there's I don't know what the minimum is, but we need to set it in a legislature and Gene Peters Baker or some other DA or squishy uh, DA can't say, okay, we're going to make this go away. We're going to plead it down to a misdemeanor, yada, yada, yada. You go to jail. And if you murder somebody, you don't ever get out of the box. I agree. So that's my king for the day. Okay. Edict declared. <laughs> we, well, we need something that goes beyond the the um, the graphic, you know? Something that goes, yes! <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I mean, am I wrong? Disagree with that if I'm wrong. I, I don't know. But Leave I it just, in the comments. We, we've got to do something about this. We've got to do something about this. The police chief in Washington, D.C. was very passionate about this. Uh, with his city council trying to plead down crimes to make them misdemeanors. If you commit a crime with a gun... They wanted to make that a misdemeanor. He's like, put them all in jail. Put them in jail as long as we need to put them in. And I guarantee you, if we actually implemented this, we would take care of this in a generation. If people knew that when they committed a crime with a gun, they were going to go away for a very long time, and if they killed somebody, they were going to go away for life, it would end it. Yeah. There was a a pretty viral video that was going around maybe a month or two ago, and I think it was like Guatemala or some other country – Central American or South American country, they had cracked down on crime and their president instituted this new thing where they were going to like harden the prisons. Do you remember seeing that? Mm -mm. Let me see if I can find it real quick. But, um, uh, but yeah, like 
basically it's this clip of of this South American prison, and it's just like the dudes are like you know, walking like this with their hands behind their back and there's right. just like cops everywhere. And there's Well, think just... about our prisons here in this country too. I mean, a lot of them are like country clubs. I mean, they've got cable, they got a gym. Yeah, here we go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, check this out. Maybe we ought to make prison more like prison again. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh my. And like, you can tell that these are some bad dudes too. They all have facial tattoos and yeah. <laughs> everything. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there you go. I, I would also put that in my edict. Let's make prison more like prison. Yeah, I mean, this doesn't look fun. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what the left is going to say. It's like, well, it's disproportionately going to affect black people, and, and you're being a racist, and yada, 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 yada. I'm talking about crime. Yeah. Isn't, isn't well, our... if it's going to disproportionately affect black people, then maybe black people should stop disproportionately doing it. <laughs> well, there you go. Lady Justice is blind, and, and we should make her blind and just deal with the crime and the facts on the ground. And wherever it takes you, if this, you know, if, if there's a jury trial and this 82-year-old guy, this is a bad shoot, he needs to go away for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't absolutely. care who you are. You don't have the right to just shoot somebody for ringing your doorbell. Yep. Agreed. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. All right. You ready to go to Joey B's ice cream parlor? Oh, am I? Almost my favorite part of the podcast. <laughs> Almost. If we didn't have a special guest today, this my would be my... My name is Joe Biden, and I love ice cream. <laughs> I came down because I heard there was chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> Can Joe Biden eat ice cream? Well, some people think that's all I do is eat ice cream. Chocolate, chocolate chip. Oh, yeah. You've been with your mother. I can smell ice cream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite part. I love ice cream. Whoops! Ignore that, everybody. I think my favorite part of that is when he says uh, when he's standing in front of the crowd and he's like, "Choco, choco, chip," and everyone's like, "Whoa!" That's good (laughs) stuff, right there. So impressed. All right. Well, Joey is uh, 80 years old, and he is informally announced for re-election. And part of me, Kurt, in the back of my mind, thought he wouldn't do it. That, that his family might say, Joe, it's bad, because his decline is evident. And if you think about this, he'll be 82 in the next election, right? 86 if he wins to get through a second term. And I've been around this enough with my grandparents to see what this looks like. This does not get better. This isn't like a cold. You don't get over this, and all of a sudden, now you've got cognitive, um, you know, your synapses are all connecting again, and, and you're back in the game. That's not going to happen. This, When you see Joe Biden on any day where he speaks, it's the best day it's going to be. Yeah, because they probably have him hopped up on, you know... Uh, it's, and it's going to go downhill from there. And and I don't know if the fix is already in that he's definitely going to get the nomination. Um, RFK Jr. is announcing for president. You and I would not agree with his policies, but at least he can put a sentence together. Yeah. Well, there's actually somebody else who just announced that they're running against Joe Biden, too. We, I, we can skip ahead to it if you want. Well, but, uh, he's gonna. He's 82 um, uh, in 2024, and he'd be 86 when leaving the White House. So, um, you know, it, it, there, there's all kinds of clips that you've got lined up just to give people the evidence that they already know that the guy is slipping on a daily basis. Well, here's him. Uh, I'm assuming this is what you're talking about from the Easter so, th- thing. This is a fantastic event, one of my favorites of the year. I was just wondering, uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, will you be uh, taking part in the Easter egg rolls uh, after planning on after 2020? Well, I plan on <laughs> at least three or four more Easter egg rolls. At least three or four more? Maybe, maybe, maybe five. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe six. So what the hell? Are you, are you saying that uh, you would be uh, taking part in uh, our upcoming election in 2024? Well, I'll, either, so I'll, that, either, I'll either roll an egg or you know, being the, the, good, you know, the guy who's pushing them out. Come on. What does that even mean, <laughs> the guy who's pushing them out? Laying eggs, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> but then, uh, so you mentioned people running against... Uh, Joe Biden, and we have a new candidate who just announced that they're running as a Democrat against Joe Biden. You probably don't know this yet. We brought you an exclusive interview with Tiger King Joe Exotic just a few weeks ago when the infamous Zookeeper first launched his presidential campaign. And now Joe's got a brand new announcement. He's running as a Democrat. Now, he previously ran for president in 2016 as an independent, and then he ran for governor of Oklahoma as a libertarian in 2018. So I spoke to Joe about what made him switch parties and how he plans to beat President Biden from behind bars. Watch. 
so yeah, he's Joe Exotic, the Tiger King, is running as a Democrat from jail. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy times. No the one Democrat that I would vote for. Yeah, I'm putting that on record right now. <laughs> a legitimate Democrat, RFK Jr., is is going to throw his hat in the ring as a Democrat, and we'll see where that goes. Um, but Kareem Jean Pierre, she says that Joe Biden, you know, because here's my thing: he doesn't have press conferences. If he does have a press conference, they've been very few and very far between. You know how it goes. He comes out and he says, well, I've been given a list of people that I'm supposed to call on. Um, and he doesn't take follow-up questions. So I think he's a follow-up question away from a complete meltdown on the world stage. Don't yeah. you? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And we have the proof here. I mean, we've seen these before, but it's like it's so embarrassing, man, just like yeah. looking at – you can kind of see what it says. You enter – the Roosevelt Room and say hello to participants. You take your seat. <laughs> yeah, that's what's going on there. Uh, and then Jean Pierre says, um, Corinne Jean Pierre says that this president's communicating more than any other president because he's taken more shouted questions than any other president. So I'll say this: it is also unprecedented that a president takes as many shouted questions as this president has, and he no, has. No, 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 no. No. Okay. okay. Look at her smile. She yeah. knows that it's bullshit. She knows. <laughs> Why does he take shouted questions? Because they're frustrated. The White House press corps, they're trying to do their job. And and the way they've choreographed this for Joe is they've got the helicopter going on the South Lawn to take him somewhere, right? And they rush him out the door, and it's like, boom, 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 boom. And then there's shouted questions, and he looks really confused. Well, he's confused because he's confused, but there's also the helicopter in the background, and they've got no choice but to shout questions at him. Yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, it was funny when, when she uh, – this is a brief aside, but when she mentioned that, I thought of Trump because obviously Trump was getting shouted at all the time. And this is just one example. This is his speech from Charlottesville or about Charlottesville. Uh, and just listen to how he was treated by the reporters. On both sides, sir, you said there was hatred, there was violence on both sides. Uh, are, well, I do you think there's blame. The yes, I think there's blame on both sides. You look, at, you look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. And, only and, and, not and, and if you report Like, he can't even talk. They're just shouting him say. down. <laughs> and that was, like, the entire Trump presidency. So for her to say that is, is pretty, pretty laughable, honestly. But Yeah. As we go into 2024... Let's try and make this about ideas and not the circus that's going to go on around it. Not Joe Exotic, not Trump, whether he's going to be in a courtroom or out on the uh, trail or whatever. Uh, the question I would ask is the same one kind of that Ronald Reagan asked. Are you better off than you were before Biden? Is America better off than it was before Joe Biden? The difference is stark here when you look at Trump's policies versus Biden policies. Yeah, I mean, Trump probably didn't go as far as you want to go on the right. No, and I mean not in a lot of ways, but it's like what we talked about with. Uh, so you can't you can't brand is. him on the left. You can't they can't brand him as you know this Nazi that wanted to do yada yada and yada yada. When you take all of the carnival away from it and you just strip it down to the policies that he he put in he enacted that Biden you know did a complete one eighty on the second he came in. I um, mean it was very right down the middle of the road. Yeah, I mean, I think he was he was conservative on a lot of things, but you know, there are things that people were not happy with him about. He never really completed the wall. He kind of started it, and then you know he pushed the vaccine, which was another big problem. But um, you know, you, you don't let the the good the perfect be the enemy of the good, and we we strive for perfection. We strive for our uh, agenda. Uh, so that we can at least make some progress, you know. That's yeah. that's my opinion on it. So Joey B goes over to uh, Ireland. He takes Hunter with him, by the way. They ask him. They shout out a question. You know, who's going with you to Ireland? N never mind the fact that we've got a leaked, you know, report from the Pentagon. And they're all of them are focused on the 21 year old leaker. By the way, they're not focused on what's in the leak. What's in the leak is about how deep we are in to Ukraine right now. We may even have boots on the ground over there, and we haven't even been told about that. So he doesn't get any questions about that. He gets a free pass. He gets to take his his coked up son, who has his own issues, over on a free trip to Ireland. He gets over to Ireland. Nobody's asking him about the Pentagon leaks and all that. Um, he gets to talk about how he wants to. Um, Lick the world. This may be an ice cream reference. <laughs> yeah, he has ice cream on the brain. There's nothing our nations can't achieve if we do it together. I really mean it. So thank you all. God bless you all. Let's go 
Let's go lick, lick the world. Lick the world. <laughs> I love how he paused on that too. He's like, <laughs> and let's go, let's go, uh, lick, lick the world. And, you know, <laughs> and they go into Easter and they have spiked a report There's because nothing. they did it going into Easter, right? That says they're A, proud of the withdrawal from with Afghanistan and that anything negative that happened on the withdrawal is Trump's fault. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. All right. So um, a couple of uh, sponsors here, and then we'll get to our special guest for the deal. Funhouse Pizza is uh, back with us for another year. Thanks to Jim Dingman and his team there at Funhouse Pizza. They're on 50 Highway in Lee's Summit. I believe probably in May, hopefully before Memorial Day weekend, we're going to be live at Funhouse Pizza in Lee's Summit. They're also on 7 Highway in Blue Springs. Jim Dingman is a great American. Did you see the picture that I put up on our podcast page that I stole from somebody i think jim should put that in outside of his uh, women's bathroom can you pull that real yeah. quick yeah, I'll pull uh, because you know we've gotten a lot of feedback on that on the uh, podcast page there by the way that you just went by something i just put up today and that is testicular injuries among female <laughs> athletes how it's really spiked there you go <laughs> i got a lot of uh feedback on this one too yesterday did you see that no what is that so it's uh a post about homeschooling he's uh from this random guy on Twitter. He says, our homeschoolers only do two hours a day of schoolwork. The rest of the time, it's caring for animals, gardening, art, play, etc. They're testing well above grade. Makes you wonder what they're doing in public schools all day. And then it's two little girls carrying bales of hay. I saw that and I immediately screenshotted it and sent it to my wife. And I was like, this is what we're doing when we have kids. Yeah. <laughs> so look at the the next restroom sign that you're going to see at Funhouse Pizza. I, th- I can't speak for Jim Dingman, but I think this is going to be it. Can you read that for me? Yeah, it says, ladies only, no Toms, no Harrys, no Dicks. Males using this toilet will be prosecuted. Yeah. There you go. So there's a lot of feedback on that. And I think what you're seeing, Kurt, is women are finally waking up and saying, all this all this trans stuff is men telling us what a woman is. Yeah. And, and I think they're over it. Yeah, and they probably, you know, don't want swinging cocks in their face in the changing room. It's, it's misogynist, <laughs> it's sexist, and I, I just can't believe we're having this conversation. I can't believe we're in a space in time where, well, you know, we, we fought hard for Title IX so that women could have an even, you know, competitive uh, playing field. Uh, but I think in 2023, if you think you're a woman, you get to play on the girls' team. Yeah, well, you can't believe it, but believe it. Here we are. All right. So Funhouse Pizza is with us. We thank them for that. Uh, And Midwest GI, they are with us as well. Uh, Dr. Mark Taormina. I'm always afraid I'm going to say his name wrong, you know, because uh, he even phonetically spelled it out for me. It's Dr. Mark Taormina, Midwest GI Health in Lee Summit, serving all of eastern Jackson County for GI services. They mainly focus on the colonoscopy, the upper endoscopy examinations. That's if you've had them both, you want to make sure that they do the top before they do the bottom. That's what I was always told. You know, make sure it goes down <laughs> your throat a joke in there before somewhere. it goes up your uh, other thing there. Uh, but it's important and because colon cancer is something you can screen for it's something that can be treated caught early enough it's very treatable if it's late you've got a serious problem and and we we hear that story every day in the news about how colon cancer is going up uh and that people are dying from colon cancer get screened get screened your insurance will pay for this because they'd rather uh do the screening than have to treat you for the colon cancer. And uh, they're all set up in Lee's Summit there at Midwest GI Health and Wellness. Google rating of 4.9 out of 5 stars. You can find them online at MidwestGIHealth.com and uh, you can reach them on the phone at 816-836-2200. Glad to have them as part of Dale Carter's America. So next on Dale Carter's America, and and Kurt, you know this, we've thrown out the invitation several times to people who don't agree with us, right? We want to get them in here so we can have a conversation, and and instead of talking over each other, maybe talk to each other. So we extended an invitation to one of my fellow program directors in the building here. She is the program director of KCKC, KC102 in Kansas City, and she is Natalie Randall. So, Natalie, thank you for uh, coming to uh, Dale Carter's America. Um, As I mentioned, I've had this conversation with a lot of folks who don't see eye to eye with what Kurt and I believe. And and they talk a good game. And then when I put them in a corner, it's like, (laughs) 
come on the podcast. I'm not going to bite you. Um, you know, I, we'll, we'll throw out some ideas and, and see if we can talk to each other and get a dialogue. Am I going. the first one that said yes? Yes. Oh, goodness. And you do literally have me in a corner. Yeah. So. <laughs> but it's okay. We've got a safe word. We'll, we'll come up with yes, a safe word. Everything safe is going to be fine. I will tell you, I'm nervous. I don't get nervous very uh, often. Don't but be I'm nervous. nervous. <laughs> it's just us and you and I have been friends for a long time. 100%. And you, I respect you. That's why I'm, I'm willing to come in and have the conversation. Because see, I do. it'll all work out. It'll all be fine. As we mentioned, Natalie runs KC102 here in our building. Uh, so she's the same level I am. I'm program director at KFKF. She's program director and she does the afternoon show at KC102. You've not listened to the podcast, so I thought it'd be a great uh, chance to remind everyone else because we get new listeners, new viewers all the time on the podcast on what the principles. When we when Kurt and I set this thing up, I had five guiding principles. And I think that would be a good place for us to start. Yes. One, we tell the truth. It's I have no problem so with rare. That. <laughs> it is so rare, right? I get in trouble for being too honest and yeah. too truthful. So, <laughs> and you know, when you can't agree on an objective truth, what we what we do is we ask a lot of questions. And I think the more questions we ask, we can get to the truth. Um, we don't name call. Um, you've seen a lot of like talk show hosts, conservative talk, liberal talk, oh, whatever yes. it is. Um, we don't name call. I don't see any point in that. Um, we don't question the other side's patriotism. We we don't agree with them but we don't question their patriotism. We think everybody who gets in the political yeah. game does it because they love their country. Uh, see, this is why I love you. Yeah. Like, this is why I'm willing to come in here and do this. Okay. <laughs> we call out hypocrisy wherever it exists, and there is a lot of that. On both sides. Yes. Um, the next one's kind of long. We defend the principles of smaller government, strong military, reasonable legal immigration, law and order, and a market-driven capitalistic economy. <laughs> There's a lot there to unpack. There is a lot there. And probably you're not you going to agree with I all of it. I think you'd be surprised that there's a lot of stuff that I'm, I agree more with you than you realize. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, there's a couple in there that <laughs> – Well, and the last one is I unashamedly love my country and will always put it first. Um, yes. You know, a lot of people – I'm wearing my red, white, and blue for see, you today. See, you're looking good in that. <laughs> um, there are people who say that, that if you put your country first and America first and all that, you're one of two things. You're xenophobic. Um, or you're jingoistic. Jingoistic means you're a cheerleader for your country. I'll wear that all day. Xenophobic means you're afraid of somebody else. And I'm not afraid of anybody. All right? Bring it. Right. But we ought to have rules. So uh, out when of number say, four. Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you say you put your country first, you put your country before everything. Family. Uh, I'm an America first. No, not family, really. Family, God. I would say like, God, family, country is okay. where I come yeah, down. Okay, yeah. It's kind of how I built my radio station, so we're kind of the same. Yeah. God, family, uh, and country. Um, but certainly I put American interests above other countries' interests. Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. So out of all of the things I gave you in point number four, what do you disagree with? Um, the, the last one is the one that highlighted me right away. Market-driven capitalistic economy. Yeah. Well, and I think that's what I, when we spoke before, when you asked me about coming on and we were trying to figure out what I would do when I came in here mm -hmm. and you mentioned today is tax day. It is. And I love that you came back and said, I think that we should just talk about, you know, the role of the federal government in, in our lives and yeah. in how our country is, is governed. And I think one of the fine lines that if you look at both sides is from my take, the side that I would assume you are on is is more about the capitalistic, which I, I mean, yes, capitalism is not a bad thing. We want our businesses to do well. We want, you know, but I, I have less faith in the individual business owners and capitalism to do the trickle down. So that's where I kind of come in on a different side of it a little bit. Oh, you just smiled. <laughs> So you have more faith in the government. Well, and I, I mean, that's the thing is I, <laughs> I, I want to have more faith in humankind, yeah. but unfortunately that's not where we're at. And, yeah. that, and no one has all the answers. Nobody has all the answers. When Kurt and I started the podcast, the first, I don't remember how many episodes, Kurt would probably know better than I, but we took apart the Constitution. 
That's great. I'm going to go back and have listen. Have you read I it? Should, I'm, I'm very sorry that have I... Have you read the Constitution? Not from start to finish. Well, maybe when I was in school, yeah. but it's been a long time. Uh, you know, we, we uh, had a fun segment because there were some judges that uh, President Biden nominated and Senator Kennedy in Louisiana, who is one of my favorite senators, because he's like he's like Matlock, right? <laughs> he kind of looks like Matlock, and, and he asks questions like... I'm Judge. assuming he's not a Kennedy from Boston. Oh, no, 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 no. And they hate that. They hate oh, the fact yes. that John Kennedy from Louisiana is a Republican. Oh, I'm sure. But, but he asked a judge, I said, can you tell me what Article 2 of the Constitution is for? And he got a deer in the headlights look. Now, the way I look at this is, if I'm going to a doctor and I ask them a medical question, they better not give me a deer in the headlights look. This is a person going for a federal judgeship who does not know what the Article 2 of the Constitution is. Do you? Oh, God. You know what? Off the bat? No, I don't. Okay. And well, that's the one thing interesting. I mean, there was, I almost felt like, oh, am I going in front of a firing no, squad? Because no, 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 I no, even no. said to you right away. Is you're that not going for a judgeship. I, well, exactly. <laughs> well, and I also, the, the thing is, is that one of the things I so highly respect about you is not only your passion, but your knowledge. And I, I even said to you before we came in, as I said, you will probably be more schooled on some of this. You do spend more time really looking into, I know what my initial reactions are. Mm-hmm. I know what feels right to me. I'm also a single mom running the radio station, so sure. I don't have as much yeah. time to dive down. But to hear that, that's disgusting. He well, should be completely disqualified as soon well, as that she. happened. <laughs> oh, she, well. At least we think it was a she. These days, huh? Okay, I'm not going to get <laughs> into that. Yeah, let's not, not even go that. there. <laughs> All right, so just, just kind of in broad strokes, Article 1 is, it sets up the uh, Congress, Yes. The House and the okay. Senate. Mm-hmm. Article 2 sets up the presidency and the executive branch. Okay. Article 3, the judiciary. It goes on and on like that. The branches that. of government. The branches of government. It's amazing how many people you ask what the three branches are, yeah. and they don't know. And they really don't I know. I do know that one. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we broke down the Constitution, and we talked, and I almost look at it like it's the Bible. This, The Constitution tells you what the government can do. More importantly, what it can't do, especially when you get to the Bill of Rights, it's negative rights. It's like the government can't tell you what to say, can't take your gun away from you, can't do an illegal search and seizure. You know, you have the right to remain silent. You know, all the things that the government can't do to you. Barack Obama even said uh, accurately that it's, it's a list of negative rights from the government's point of view, and he's absolutely right on that. So with that as a backdrop... What do you think the role of the federal government is? It's kind of a broad question. We can narrow it as we get closer. But but what do you want the federal government to do? Well, and the interesting thing is I think what it comes down to is, is not only what the federal government wants to do, but the states' rights. And mm-hmm. that's where I think where we get muddy when it, you look at, you know, red or blue is that I feel as if the people that are on the right want less federal government and more states' rights. Correct. I, what I would say to that is, if you look at the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution, the last one mm-hmm. in the Bill of Rights, yep. it essentially says that the things we have not granted the federal government in this document is remanded to the states and the people. Right. Okay. So, and, and something I've always believed is, you know, I was a city councilman for nine years. I know. Um, I believe that government is best practiced closest to the problem. Okay. okay. If you've got no, a pothole sense. in your neighborhood. You're, you're getting not on your call the federal no, government. No, you're getting right. on your city councilman's phone, right. and you're saying, "Hey, because I got a lot of those. Fill this damn pothole, right?" <laughs> um, you know. But if we're being attacked by a foreign country, I want my federal government to protect me. Right. So, I mean, to to a certain extent, you want the federal government to oversee the military, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Of That's their that number one job. Look, we're green. We're green. We're <laughs> yeah, green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the but, problem is, we we've gotten so far afield from that. Well, and that's uh, the thing that when you ask me, like, what do you want the federal government to do? I mean, there are some people that would love to say, you know what, we don't even need it. And we can all be individual states and we can be individual countries. That's not the answer. No. But I also believe that to a certain extent where I come from and even when people say, oh, you're a liberal to me or, oh, you're blue or I'm not. I am somebody that for for years and years considered myself 100% moderate. I have voted both ways. I have voted by my conscience of who I believe is right and who can get to the point where they get forward and, and help the federal government oversee what they need to see. With me, the federal government is about taking care of the people 
in a military sense, 100 percent. I do believe in regulation. I do believe that there needs to be a certain amount of regulation and there needs to be a protection of the people under that. And Mm -hmm. I know that's one of the things I think a lot of Republicans would say, that there's too much regulation. And do I agree with that? Way too much. Yes. And do I agree with that? Yes. Or what they're regulating. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, no, none of us are going to be in this country 100% satisfied with what True. the federal government trickles down to us. Well, what the federal government has done, Congress has a lot of power. It's why it's the Article I power. Right. And they have given that power to Article II. They've given it to the president. And so what we have now is we have this ginormous executive branch, mm-hmm. and you've got a bunch of unelected bureaucrats out there yes. running things like the EPA and, and the FDA and the CDC and the complete alphabet of everything that you can think of. And Without oversight, because Congress basically has said, okay, you guys take care of all of that. We don't want to roll in that. And Kurt and I talk about this all the time. We were kind of hoping that with a Republican House, they'd pull some of that back in because that's their job. Right. You know, my congressman is Mark Alford. If I'm pissed about something, I'm going to call Mark and say, you do something about this. Right. And I don't want to hear back from him, well, that's the Fed and, you know, that's the executive branch. And, and Republicans and Democrats have done this. I'll give you an example. Uh, Do you think education has gotten better since we've had a Department of Education? It went in in 1979, a federal Department of Education. You think education in this country has gotten better or worse? Probably worse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We would agree with that. Yeah. Okay. So that – okay, you couple that, the over-regulation from unelected bureaucrats, which is going on. I mean, it's become like a – it's become like an unelected fourth branch of government. Right. They're out there. They're they're regulating things in our lives every day. I mean, that's not a tinfoil – thing. I mean, that's, I I don't have like a aluminum foil hat on it. That's what's happening in our world. Right. They are there. It gets us to the fact where some bureaucrat somewhere said, Hey, we need to have electric vehicles. We're going to do a whole podcast on how problematic that is and why people aren't even asking the right questions right now. They're just going along with it. It's like, Oh, the government says so. It's like, Oh, this climate change things, settled science. I disagree with that. Um, See, that's another thing that yeah we would disagree on. You think it's settled science? I, I think Based climate change what? as a science is is a I think it's partly natural. I think the earth is evolving and things Agreed. change, but I think we've added a lot to it that is making it far worse and making it move quicker. And it's like you look, there's not tons of scientists that are are one hundred percent have done this their entire careers who don't say it's not science. Yeah. Well, um, so you're thinking that if we all get electric cars, we're going to get to the Goldilocks temperature? No, that's of- absolutely not what I think. That's the thing. Is that, well, and that's what I think a lot of times what we do is we assume we know what the other person thinks yeah. because, oh, they're this side or right. they're this side. And that's one of the biggest things I, I don't think is ever going to change and it's gotten worse. So we have to find a way to try to change it. Okay. Doing this, talking and See? listening. Yeah. So on this tax day, there's some numbers I want to throw at you. Oh, okay. goodness. Yeah, I know. I'm you not a math prepared. guy You come prepared. I just come yeah. with coffee, okay. and you come with numbers. <laughs> and I got these from the debt clock. Okay. Do you, you ever look at the debt yes, clock? Yeah. That is a scary, scary thing to look at. Well, yeah. Th- okay. It's like a doomsday clock. As of today, <laughs> Oh, he's Natalie, pulling it up for me. <laughs> as of today, we are $31.7 trillion in debt as a country. Yeah. $31.7 mm-hmm. trillion. Dollars. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> we we spend six trillion dollars a year for our federal government. Yes, six trillion dollars a year. We take in four point six trillion in revenue. Our revenue right now is higher than it's ever been. We're getting more tax revenue than we ever have. Right. But it doesn't matter because they just keep spending, spending more. It. And now you know we've got to raise the debt ceiling, right. or it's going to be hell and calamity. Um, that's what they're saying. And then I did. I saw something else I thought was interesting. If you take that $31.7 trillion and you divide it by each taxpayer in this country, each taxpayer in this country owes $246,868. Okay? So if we all just plunk that down, we'll be golden. I'm ready for you to write a check. Okay, yeah. Um, do you, know, you know what I do for a living, so you know <laughs> that is not happening. <laughs> okay, here's an interesting difference, though. Each citizen 
their their share of that is ninety four thousand six hundred sixty six dollars. Big difference between two hundred forty six thousand and ninety four thousand. You know why that is? Because we lop off the bottom. I'm going to say bottom third. Don't pay federal income tax. Right. They don't. You get that right? Yes. There I are people it. out there who do not pay, and it's not the people at the top. Our president's like, pay your fair share. I get that down pretty good, Kurt. <laughs> Come on, man. Not a joke. Not a joke. You know, pay your fair share. I didn't you know I was going to get impressions. And, 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 you know, the bottom third do not pay federal taxes. Right. Who's paying the federal taxes? Well, and so at the end of the day, and to go back to the debt, the debt mm-hmm. before we move forward, it's something that, and I'll be honest, it's it's always confused me in the past because I've looked at it and I see, you know, especially around election times, each side say this person puts more to the debt and this side puts Who more cares? to the they're debt. They're both Who, doing it. They're both doing it. And that's where it's, it's that's like- That's part of the truth. Where, <laughs> yes. Well, exactly. I mean, technically, if you look right now, I mean, and I, I can't cite my source off the top of the head. I, I believe it was a reputable source, but it's, I mean, technically, Biden has taken down the debt from where it was, at least in 2022. The debt has not gone down. The debt has... He hasn't re- reduced no, no. it by like 900... No. He talked about deficit reduction, and that okay. dealt more with COVID relief. There's two right. terms here, the debt and the deficit. Okay. 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 The debt is... Uh, here's how we get to the debt. Okay, we spend $6 trillion. We only take in 4.6. So at the end of the year, we've spent $6 trillion, We only took in 4.6. So now it's calamity, calamity, calamity. calamity yes, we've got right. to raise the debt ceiling, right. raise the debt ceiling. So you take that 1.4 deficit and you throw it onto the debt. That's that's how the debt continues to grow. Right. And then the other issue is, you know, when we had like 0% interest rates, okay, right. you could borrow at 0%, the government could borrow at 0%. Now we're closer to 5 from the Fed, and right. so we we have to at least pay the interest on the debt. Right. So if the interest on the debt now comes with a 5% interest charge, think about what that does versus a 0%. So what would you be I mean so your answer to it stop. would be just stop spending. Stop the spend for God's right. sake. Well, and the other issue that you have is everything that goes through and when they're trying to get uh the bills that go through that put money towards certain things, all these people earmark all this stuff into every single bill. So Terrible. you can't even you can't even add a bill. That's what I told you the other day. I almost think the answer is if everyone that's in office right now is evicted and we start <laughs> over. That's that's my solution. Yeah. So like where again at the end of the day, where do you find a solution? Because I don't think to a certain extent, I wanna believe that most of the politicians are there to try to advance our comp- our, our country and to protect American citizens. But I think a lot of them have gotten to the point where they're there just for themselves. That's true. And it's it all comes about being down re-elected. to who you more believe or trust in. And that's where I come into effect where I would consider myself, I was moderate, but now I would consider myself left-leaning because of the fact that I go down to where my trust level, I I have major issues with some of the people that are in the Republican Party and who are running it and who they are supporting. I just don't know if I can trust them with my other rights besides just financial. Hmm. That's what it comes to. I have a few issues to me that are very close to my heart that I have seen are being dismantled by the other party. So I have to go and lean towards left. Okay. We'll have you come back. And you can like have a list of those things that you think are <laughs> yes. being taken away from you. Right. And then we can talk about those. Um, but as far as this goes, yeah. with this conversation, it's not tenable. We cannot keep adding to a debt that we are never going to pay off. It puts us uh, – it's a national security issue. So what do, you th- what do you think, as someone that I would say is red, what is the answer? Something that Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton both agreed on. Which is, wow, okay. Yeah. Love that. Line item veto for the president. Okay. A line item veto. So that these humongous bills that you talk about that, that have, have earmarks. All these, yes, all these right. earmarks. You've got a president who can say, not signing off on that one. Not signing off on that and one. can stop it. And then a president with some balls who will come in and say, I'm not going to name a Department of Education secretary. Education is a local issue. 
your local school school board needs to dictate uh, education. Right. Somebody who'll stand up and say, since we've had a Department of Education in 1979, our education has gone down in this country. Yeah. It's not working. So I mean, let's I'm do agreeing. something different. I'm a, that's, I mean, that's the thing that I do love is I think you are somebody that can give real answers to problems and have done the research and you are willing to say it. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people aren't willing to do. And like hearing you say this, I'm like, okay, I'd vote for you, Dale, even though I am not what you would consider somebody that you would expect to vote. I do believe there needs to be more local control. And that's the problem where I come in though, is that when you do have certain people manipulating the federal government to take away some of my rights that I believe are inherently my rights it's like, where do I come down? Where do I go with what my financial rights or yeah. do I go about my body autonomy or do I go? There's so many issues that can be overwhelming. All right. Write those down. Okay, I'm going to. Next time we have you back, yes. we'll delve into a yes. couple of those. And, and we'll I have to say I'm very dialogue. blessed, too, that I am somebody that was, you know, raised in a family that never that I've never wanted for much in my life because of my father and mother's hard work and then my hard work outside of that. And. I do believe that it, at some point we have to be able – there has to be federal government to help the, the less fortunate, but then it becomes the whole problem of people overusing it. Yeah. There's call- so many problems. How uh, do you do it? How it, do you go it, down this rabbit hole as much as you do? To me, the difference is between a safety net and a really cushy mattress. Well, that's true. <laughs> That's and I've only used the safety net once, and I was like, and I felt guilty the whole time yeah. I took unemployment. Unfortunately, Most people don't feel they don't that feel way. guilty. They want to keep getting it. Okay, it, so first things first, we're going to say that it was successful that we were able to sit in the same room. See, and and I'm you sound far more intelligent than I am. So I, <laughs> Kurt doesn't think that. Just so you know. Well, Kurt probably thinks that he's and, the smartest guy in the room always. Exactly. <laughs> so just so you know, the difference between the safety net and the mattress, if you ever a guest at my house, when I got divorced the second time, you know, and she took all the furniture <laughs> out of the house and I got new furniture, I went to a furniture store, I'm not making this up, and I said to the guy, I want your least comfortable mattresses because I don't want anybody getting comfortable in my house. Okay, that's how I feel about the federal that's government you and the safety this. net. Yeah, I don't that, want it you know to be what? comfortable. Right. I want there to be a little bit of shame involved, and I want them to right. g- get back into the mainstream. And I think that's what most people want. I think that's what, mo- again, what I say to you, uh, to, I mean, the overall reaching thing is I think there is so much more middle ground that we all agree upon than we realize. But people aren't willing to sit down and have a conversation yeah. and listen and try to understand. Okay. And like you, you've schooled me today. Like you, you have. I've learned something while I'm in here today. And I'm like, okay, Dale's got a point. I will go back and listen to your podcast. I was scared of your podcast before. I'm like, I want to like Dale. <laughs> I enjoy Dale's company at work. We have a great banter. I don't want to listen to that and, and just not be able to have my banter. There you so go. I and- will banter with you, sir. Kurt just got the promo. (laughs) (laughs) Come back another time. I will. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you, Natalie, for coming in and being such a great sport here. And uh, open invitation. Anytime you want to come back to Dale Carter's America, I think, you know, if this segment goes over as well as I think it will, uh, we'll be doing this a lot more often. We want to thank uh, Royal Roofing and Solar, Austin Watterson and his team in Cass County. Uh, In fact, Kurt, uh, I think I'm going to do it. I'm getting a new roof. Nice. Austin's done part of the roof, the dormer, but uh, the rest of the roof needs to go. And Bob Watson, you can breathe a sigh of relief because we're not going to turn it in as an insurance claim for a lot of reasons. So uh, Austin and his team are working on my roof. I don't know if I'm going to do the solar thing or not, but we're definitely going to have the conversation uh, because Royal Roofing and Solar can show you how you can turn your roof into its own utility. Instead of leasing your utilities from the electric company and the gas company, you can create your own energy in your home and, you know, maybe fire your gas and electric company. It's a way to take what everybody's talking about and make it less about virtue signaling and and more tangible. So uh, call Austin and his team and let them explain that to you at 816-540-7057. There's tax credits, grants for small rural business and uh, ag producers as well. And uh, Austin's got the uh, lowdown 
down on all of that. And, uh, you know, Bob Watson, our State Farm agent, 7th and Main in Blue Springs, 816-229-7878. Um, auto, home, life, commercial insurance. And, and you mentioned that I'm using the Bob Watson spots on the podcast to air my grievances. Yes. And probably that's true. Uh, but, you know, we had to take baby Harry to the uh, 24-hour uh, pet ER in Lee's Summit. Yeah. Do, do you have a pet? I have two cats, and yeah. uh, when we first when we first got the cats, I said to my wife, I was like, I don't really want to like spend a lot of money on them. So yeah. like, if they get really sick, we'll just get new cats. Time for a new cat. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and that's fine because I'm a dog guy, not a cat guy, and I get that. Reference. Dogs are a little bit different, dogs though. You know, are dogs different. are more companion animal, that's more personal. It. You know, and baby Harry's part of our family. Yeah. We have adopted him, and yeah. you know, I put up more pictures of baby Harry than I do my grandkids. I'm not yeah. sure what that says about me as a grandparent <laughs> at this point, but baby Harry has wrapped his paw and his tail around me. I mean, so he's he's like he's part of our family now. So he got sick. We took him to the 24 hour ER in. Uh, Lee Summit, and you know, you give them a kidney because it costs a lot of money to take them to the 24 hour pet ER. So Bob calls me, Bob Watson, my state farm guy, and he goes, You know, we have pet insurance. We got a company that we partner with, and people are actually buying pet insurance, and it makes sense. If you've got a dog that's going to be with you a while, and that dog gets cancer, and and you go through that, I've heard from listeners, Kurt, who have spent thousands of dollars out of pocket treating their animals. Yeah, so have I. So, so I, if you've got a pet that you love almost as much as I love Baby Harry, because I don't think you can match my love for Baby Harry, call Bob Watson and see if he can't set you up with pet insurance as well. 816-229-7878. He's licensed in both Missouri and Kansas and would love to talk to you today with surprisingly great rates at State Farm. That's Bob Watson, State Farm agent in Blue Springs. Okay, I, I, I ran across this and I thought this would be a great way to end today's podcast episode. There's a bus driver in in Amherst, Ohio. I think she got fired. She quit. Oh, she quit. Yeah. Okay. Um, and she's trying to retire. So they've got these uh, T-shirts that they're selling online, which we can talk about in a minute. But basically, she had it. She had it. She And when I heard her going off on these kids on the bus, I thought... Man, she has read the Dale Carter parenting book <laughs> because I've gone off on my own kids like this. And I don't think there's a damn thing wrong with that. You know, what we've gotten to as parents, what I have seen with my own two eyes is, are you sure that's going to be okay? You know, I mean, parenting has gone from, by God, this is my house, my rules, this is what you're going to do, right. to, are you sure you're okay with that? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we've got the video of her going off on this school bus. Yeah. Language warning. <laughs> There's a lot of cussing. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> God damn it. Coach, where do you expect me to okay. fucking take? <laughs> Where's your fucking shoes? 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 Where's your I'm done with it. I'm going to start kicking some fucking serious ass. <laughs> Do you hear me? Yes. My foot's going to be so far up your goddamn ass, it's going to dangle out your goddamn nose. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> she could have been my football coach. I, I can't tell you how many times my football coach talked about how far his foot was going to go up my ass. Um, so I think we've all had, I know at least I, ha I did, I think maybe it was middle school. Or like when I was a freshman in high school, we've all had like the angry bus driver, uh, and usually a, a female. Uh, mine looked a lot like this lady, but she she didn't quite go this far. But I definitely well, had an angry bus. She's driver. allergic to whatever they were spraying. Yeah, and they yeah. were spraying it in in order to you know get this kind of a reaction out of her. And somebody, of course, brought out their phone. They they got it. Right. So you know she was probably given a choice: retire or we're going to fire you. Can we watch a little bit more? Oh, I sure. Just, why not? <laughs> That phone in your bag. No, you give it to me. All right, fine. Done. God dang it, I can I, fucking smell it. I spray <laughs> I'm allergic to the open, shit. Open I didn't backpack. spray anything. It's right, it's like it's right in the shit. big, it's right in the big so backpack. You. It's oh, in the wow. wings. Okay. You like to start shit too, Maya. You're no innocent. You're no innocent angel here. I'm done with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, and let you people walk the fuck home. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh man, that's the. Best. I love that. So now she's selling T-shirts online. Pull up that T-shirt. Yeah. What does that say? It says, "My foot's gonna be so far up your ass, it's gonna dangle from your nose." How with... can they get that shirt? We need to help this lady. Uh, I just, I don't, I don't even know if this is like the official shirt, like <laughs> shirt for her or not. I know she has a GoFundMe page too, but uh, okay, well, just, her... just Google. Yeah. Bus driver t shirt or something. Jackie like Miller is her name. J A C K I E and then Miller. Uh, and she's from Amherst, Ohio. And uh, she's selling these shirts so that she can afford her uh, retirement. But man, for a while I thought it, it, it sounded almost like one of my football coaches. It sounded like me because I learned that from my football coaches. It sounded like my wife, Jennifer, dealing with her son, Jackson, because she gets it. These are the kinds of parents we are. Our kids are not going to run our house. And if your kids or your grandkids are running your house, then I don't know why you're listening to this podcast. (laughs) Until next week, this is Dale Carter's America. The views expressed on Dale Carter's America are Dale's and Kurt Wheeler's. They do not necessarily reflect the views of KFKF or Steel City Media. Comments can be sent to dalecartersamerica at gmail.com. Check back for weekly episodes. Subscribe, spread the word, and give us a five-star review. Thanks for being a part of Dale Carter's America.